Hi, I'm Maria Anderson and I've taught at a community college for about 10 years now and I teach mathematics and I've used online homework systems for probably about seven of those years. And one of the things that bothered me over time was that students just didn't seem to be showing um, as much work anymore. They didn't really seem to understand the notation. And when it came time to study for a test, their, uh, all of their work was on little scraps of paper here and there and everywhere, if they could even find it again. Um, when they came to off my office to ask questions, you know, when they still did that, um, they couldn't find the question they were asking, and it was just completely disorganized. So I came up with a strategy this last year to help them um, be better about their notation and their understanding and have something to go back to study from. They now have to keep an organized notebook of the problems I tell them to do from the online homework system. So I don't make them do all the problems. Uh, if the problem uh, is just looking at the screen and answering a couple questions, I don't have them do that. But if it's any problem involving uh, work, then they essentially have to show that. It also gives me the opportunity to tell them that I am going to grade things like notation and problems to make sure they don't start dropping limit notation and function notation and things like that from their problems. Um, and it gives them a chance to earn some points for showing their work. Um, so the online homework system grades them on correctness and then when I give a test I collect their notebooks and I grade them on whether or not they had all of the work for the problems essentially. Now I don't grade the entire notebook. Um, I grade a few problems in the notebook so I choose 10 at random to grade and I grade those um, no, in, the, in everybody's problem sets. So um, sometimes I do it by class so each class is a different set of 10 problems and sometimes I do a couple different sets in the same class like my online classes. So um, for my online classes since they can't turn them in physically they can scan the pages I ask for so if I ask for number 10 in section 2.1 they can turn to that page and they have to send me the whole page, not just the problem, but the whole page. So they can either scan it or they can take a photo of it or they can make a video by holding the pages up to their webcam. So um, that's the way that they can turn it in. It's a timed exercise for the online class so that they can't just really quickly do all the problems. And I tell them, I don't believe in any way, shape, or form that your strategy is to do one problem per page in your notebook. So um, the surrounding work needs to be there for full credit. Um, I think it's a really nice way to do it. I, I've seen a lot of improvement in notation and, and just study habits in general from using it. Um, it's not a scientific study by the way but I can tell you that I, I like it a lot. So uh, the next video sections in here are just me showing you some of the notebooks and what they look like and how I run the table of contents and things like that. Hope it's helpful. Some of the students choose to use binders for their learning notebooks. Um, so here's another example of a notebook um, with all of the assignments written again, again all of the page numbers. And this student has their pages numbers at the top of the page. I'll just flip through a few pages here so you can see uh, the work in here. So their work, even though it's online homework, is starting to look a lot more organized. And um, the steps are shown, the notation is there for problems. Um, in a way it just wasn't there before. You will see them cross out problems and redo them sometimes. Um, you'll see the diagrams that should be there for problems, etc. Um, some students choose to use a spiral bind for their notebooks and when they do that then they often have their table of contents in a pocket and any handouts or practice tests in the pocket um, and they'll just say that. They'll say it's on paper inside of their notebook. Um, but again, page numbers are all marked, so I can turn here to any specific page, and you can see those in the top corner to find the work for a particular problem. And again, you can see um, the problems have all the work shown, notation is there, and so having them keep these learning notebooks is really, I think, quite helping their, their mathematical thinking um, and they're giving them something to look back at when they need to go and study for a test. When I go to grade one of these, I need to find the table of contents for that unit, 
which is here. When I start with my table of contents of the specific problems that I've chosen for this unit. So I look and I see where is a student put this. I write down the page number. So 3.2b, page 8, 3.3a, page 11. This just takes a second. It makes it easier to find everything. The student has to provide their own table of contents um, that I can follow. Oh, that one appears to be missing. So you see that student has, doesn't have anything marked. And then practice exam, page 38. Practice exam, second one, page 33. So once I've got this, then I go through and I look for their problems. So I say, all right, 3.1a, number 5. And as long as it looks like the student has made a reasonable attempt at the problem, they get a 2. If it's there and some attempt was made, they get a 1. And if it's not found or not attempted, they get a 0. So this one, I'll say it's found. I got a 2. Turn to page 8 for the next problem. Say, all right, this one, I'm looking for problem number four. And if there are specific directions I gave them, I listed on this sheet here. So in this case, for example, I asked to see um, the derivative in terms of f of x and g of x first, which he's got. So this one's OK. Turn to the next problem. That one looks OK. And so I'll work through um, the whole list of problems and give them a score out of 20.